help that I that I was totally located in the in the dimension that the music existed as as a uh, as energy and not the place that the music existed as words or as a or as a you know or as a thing to entertain people I was just really in a heavy place when we recorded the album just like I heard ghosts on the whole record you know you mean in a weird place spiritually spiritually yeah it was just a fun place to be mm -hmm. like I I uh, I heard ghosts on the whole record and I'd always say to people when we were playing it for them, we were recording them, I'd say, don't you hear those ghosts? Listen. And Flea would go, John, not, not everybody hears them. Just we hear them. I remember uh, seeing you in Amsterdam once, and you were real lively and up. Oh, I wasn't happy at all, man. No? No, not at all. Why not? Because I didn't want to be there doing press at all. I, I had to leave like half, half, three quarters of the way into it. I, I didn't want to go, and Flea was like, well, you have to, because normally him and, him and Anthony would have gone, but, but they made me go with Anthony. And I was just, I was just, you know, losing my mind. Like I feel that when you speak about things, you bit, you're diarying all over them. You know, you just ruin whatever you're talking about. And and I felt like I was diarying all over this art that was really important to me. Right, and I, and I hated being told that I was a rock star. Mm. Oh, so I was saying, so Anthony would, 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 would not, uh, he felt like he couldn't joke around anymore because I was getting so serious because I was so angry about the whole press thing and the whole rock star thing. And then he would have looked like he didn't have any integrity if he would have just spouted off. So it was a really bad combination, you know. And, and like, uh, he was scared to say anything like he usually did, which was his thing. And so it was just awful. You mean he was trying to compensate for... No, he just imitated me. Oh. <laughs> he would just imitate me, so then, you know, because if I say, like, Van Gogh, blah, 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 and then he says, uh, whip out your cock and show it to my mother, like, you know, it doesn't go together. Ah, oh, I see. <laughs> One, two, three. If you close the door, the night could last forever. Let the sun shine out and say hello to never. All the people are laughing and they're having such fun. I wish it could happen to me. But if you close the door, I never have to see the day again. I never have to see the day again. Once more, I never have to see the day again. If you're a musician, you're either going to become a cool person or you're going to become, like you're going to become a good nothing. You're going to know how to be nothing and really understand it. Or you're going to be a bad nothing and just a piece of shit and there's not really any in between if you're a rock star you know one so, or the other so what did you think when you heard the news of uh, Kurt Cobain's death dad oh it's death death sorry um well, I cried I don't know why I don't like his music or anything it was awful, you know, but about his baby, I just, I don't want to talk about that. No. I, I, I just don't think he has very many guts. I just don't see why he wouldn't want to see his daughter grow up, 
you know, that he wouldn't be excited enough about that to not think of himself. See, that goes back to what we were saying, like, people just start thinking of themselves too much, you know? Mm. I don't think it's so much that they become conscious of the world of video and the world of this and that and the world of fame. They just think of themselves, and no matter who you are, whether you're a rock star or you're a garbage man, if you're thinking of yourself all the time, you're not going to be very good at what you do. Mm. <laughs> or you're not going to be very... You're not going to be a good nothing. How could you? Like with a baby, you can slam dance with them when they're two, and they'll love it. And you can tell them funny jokes when they're two, and they'll love it. And you can, you can teach them about how everybody's an idiot, and they'll love it. You know, but, you know, it doesn't occur to a lot of people how much, how intense that is, how beautiful it is. Everything I like, my record is dedicated to Clara. That's what it says on the front. Yeah, yeah. She's the smartest person I've ever met, in, in all seriousness. She likes to kiss Andy, you know. That's her first boyfriend. John got that for her for uh, her birthday. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> what I was thinking about, you know, when I uh, heard about Kurt Cobain's death, and you know, I, I. You know, we, we just experienced River, River Phoenix's death and before that Hillel's, Slovak's death. There's this self-destructive thing in, that happens to people, you know, in this business or something. Mm, everybody that? dies. I don't think it's that big of a deal. No? For instance, in River's case, I think it's more of a shame that... Uh, that he was doing something he didn't like I think it's more of a shame that he was born than he died because he didn't like this life he didn't like this place and he's at a better place now hmm. you know and that's the way I don't think that death is a big deal I don't care if I die right now it doesn't mean I'm self-destructive I, I really love life and I think that's the only way to love life it starts to separate the boys from the men when you see who's who's got that inside of them and who doesn't you know that's when somebody becomes a good musician and the other person doesn't is because one is all concerned with the future and the past you know and one is just right here right now excited you know and calm mm -hmm. and sad and doesn't give a fuck some people are sad and they're like, oh no, this leads to death. Actor River Phoenix began for films of Stand By Me, Running On Empty and My Own Private Idaho, was tot aan zijn dood goed bevriend met the Chili Peppers and John Fushanti. I live underground in this country. Yeah. In a sense of like, you know, the more experimental, you know, level of uh, lifestyle, yeah. which is just not as interconnected with business or consuming, yeah. just what you need, minimalist, and um, and that's provided me with just a different view on it all. Uh, I was short. Well, I mean, the problem is, is that I believe very much in the Native American Indians who really uh, owned this land beforehand, and their idea was that a photo can take your soul. And it scares the shit out of me, too, to be frank. To be in front of a camera? Oh, it's so frightening. Oh. That's why when I'm on set, I, I never look at the camera. Uh, you don't look at the camera. That's funny. I'm very frightened right now. I'm dealing with it somehow. Yeah, you're dealing with it quite well. I but I really am frightened. Oh. This is very... Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> a tributary to the Holland imported... Uh, <laughs> Brewski. Hops. Brewski hops Brewski yeast. The business always goes for what you do best. And I've just made myself do best in the way I've wanted to. So if they get recognition, like at the Venice Film Festival, the Toronto Film Festival, wherever it is, you know, in France and in Holland, when critics start speaking up and they believe in something, then you have the power to get um, blow jobs, basically, from the corporate leaders. Mm. I mean, I found myself um, being blown by uh, America's 
film corporations. It's nice. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I come in their fucking lens. I still want to ask you something about that, what I just said, that self-destructiveness. Because I once talked to Bob Forrest right after he did a big show in Holland. And he climbed up some, I don't know, very high thing, almost fell, and he survived. And he yeah, was very know. crazy. He was wearing my clothes. He was wearing your clothes? That whole tour. <laughs> I'll die soon anyways, and I won't, I won't have to explain myself. You serious about that? Yeah. Because you mentioned that too during the show. You said, who's afraid of uh, dying? Dying. You're not? No. Not really. So at some point you expressed, you said, uh, during the show, you said you want to give people their money's worth. Yeah. That's yeah. your idea. I don't know. You pay a lot of money, you come and see bands, and you can listen to their records. Let's, let's take, for instance, the real rock and rollers. Would you like to end up like Paul McCartney? I'd rather be dead than be Paul McCartney, I'll tell you that. Or Phil Collins, or any of that. And so, you know, just try to... I know it sounds like some melodramatic, ridiculous thing, like uh, trying to be Jim Morrison or whatever, but... Okay, here's the thing. Yeah. When I was a kid... I read the book, uh, Ladies and Gentlemen, Lenny Bruce, right? When I was 13 years old, all I wanted to do was shoot heroin. Like, that's what I wanted, because that was my idol. And then, then I found Keith Richards, and I found all these other people, Graham Parsons, all the melodrama that went on through pop culture in yeah. America for 20 years. I ate it up, because I didn't have parents, and I didn't have anybody to depend on or to ask questions to. So Lenny Bruce and Graham Parsons and Keith Richards became my role models right so and then you, thus you, if i live like that it's not me that, like consciously getting up in the morning well i'm gonna drink and i'm gonna take some drugs it's just me just because it's the way that i grew up you know it's the way that i formed my ideas boy where is this going <laughs> confession right <laughs>